Hello and welcome to Cobweb Garage. Let's take a first look at Oddbod. This is exactly how I bought this cut down. I think Indian forks. We have a Lambretta Series 2 frame, Indian GP200 engine, early Lambretta handlebars. Interesting carburetor setup. Someone has badly welded on this side stand because it, unfortunately, hits the exhaust. Apparently it did run at some point, which is what persuaded me to part with my cash to buy this thing. For me, it's like a blank canvas and I've already got parts to go on it. And we're gonna start with the mudguard. We have here one LD mudguard. Hopefully it's gonna look cool on there. Try this mudguard for the first time. bearing carrier bit is stopping the mudguard going down any further. I think I'm going to trim this bit off flat because it looks a bit of a mess. Drill a couple of holes through. It's roughly about the width of the forks so the mudguard can drop down a bit lower, sit closer to the wheel. Get in there, so I might have to just extend these right down to the vertical bit. Then I can kind of push, push it as far down as I want it. Here's where we've got to so far. It's looking pretty good. I'm gonna have an attempt to panel beat that flat so it follows the line. Beating's not my uh, forte, but you know, I'm learning anyway. Next job is I just need to drill up two holes either side. So we've got two holes each side, it should be nice and secure when it's all bolted up. I'm gonna Get some coats of lacquer. See that camera? This side's not so bad. Order some new bushes, I think. Some parts have arrived. Thanks to Lee at Scutopia. I'm just gonna try and get the bushes out. Oh yeah, crumb. This one's really loose. The other one had to bash a bit. You can see the state of that metal bush. This is the links cleaned up. Uh, pivot bolt bushes. Now for these shock mount bushes, I had these little spacer bushes actually machined up. There you go. Getting pressed in the device. Okay, now I'm more than happy with that. These look great. Forks pretty much back together. 
them out. Just took the wheel in there. I've just got the old bearings on there for now. Here's the loop. I got this from a friend of mine at the Bristol Lambretta Club. Normally, this loop would fit kind of there. My plan is to actually move it back a bit and have it sat lower. Cut out these reinforcement angles from a bit of box section. all cleaned up. Okay, this is all bolted up together. thing together nice and taut. So that's one bracket there, which is going to go in there. I made another fancy looking bracket, which is going to weld actually to the main part of the frame itself. I've made this kind of cardboard mock-up, just been marking that up on the box section. It's uh, time to cut it out.
support bracket, if you like, welded onto the frame. I'm going to take the weight. One rear mudguard fitted. Space where the kit start attaches. Obviously now it's hitting, so I'll just drill a new hole there. some foot pegs and get that all welded up and I made some brackets which are going to attach to the scoop. So here we have the two foot pegs just tacked on. You can see with this jig piece, it's just kept everything square. I've got these foot pegs welded on now. I'll tidy up the welds a little bit. Weld on this bracket, which uh, welds to the frame and accepts the back brake. Also, there's an outer cable, back brake cable uh, bracket. And finally, the brake switch as well. But this worked out really well. That's the switch which I've welded on a plate. I don't like the angle of this because the brake pedals angle down quite a lot. The brake is going to hit the mudguard. So cut it there, and welded it so now it's upright. It's not going to hit the mudguard. And also I added a piece to where the cable clamp goes on so that's upright now. Single foot pegs, I think are just going to be out of proportion for the big side panels and mudguard that I'm using. So my idea is to put like foot boards. So I picked up a couple, they're not even matching, but I'm really loving the patina on these things. So now you'll realize why I fitted the two foot pegs. It is to accept these foot boards. Thought I would mount the light. So I've got some cool brackets to weld on. I've just got a temporary bolt just to hold it all up. Welded on. I'm really pleased with this headlight. I think it looks great. If you remember from a previous episode, I cut off this top section. Basically the frame had been shortened and someone welded in a top section where the bearing race sits and they'd welded it on skew with. So I cut that off, uh, spent a bit of time and just accurately got that into position so it's nice and square and I've re-welded it. Time to move on to the handlebars. There's lots of lumpy bits on this bracket. So my first job before I make the plate, I'm going to grind all these lumpy bits. I've ground down the Lambretta bracket, which sits there. So we have to now make a plate which is going to bolt to the Lambretta bracket. And also to cover up the bearings here, I've got an old piece of a reducer from, from an exhaust pipe. So I'm going to put that over there and actually just weld it to this motorcycle clamps, which are going to screw to the top. So 
I formed the shape of the bracket on one side and just to make it symmetrical I made a little cardboard template twist it out on the other side so I just need to grind that down now so it matches This is how the brackets turned out so I'm going to use a pair of handlebars I had laying around. They're actually from a Vespa Chow moped. Bam, bam, bam. Well, I'm really happy with that riding position. That's great. Feels nice and comfortable. Desperately need a reinforcement plate put where the new seat catch is going to go. Got a piece of metal all ready to go on there. It just needs welding from the underside. cover this hole where the original toolbox was. So I've got a toolbox lid here, but basically it needs trimming down and basically welding into place there. out the old lock hole which kind of went in there because that's no longer required and made a little plate which I am going to weld into that. Next job is the horn. thinking I need some kind of stay, a bit like they have on a bonnet, just to keep it up. So I've got a bar, which is actually from a drummer's hi-hat stand. I've got a bracket here, which I'm gonna weld about there on the scooter. I'm gonna weld a washer, basically, to the, to the hi-hat stand and bar. And then, so that can pivot up then. 
I'll put a bolt on the loop so then another washer on the other end of this can just hook onto that. I've got this little um, bonnet stay keep if you like. I hope you can see that. So that clips into there. And then I'm just going to weld, I've made a bracket to hold the keep and that will just weld on the back there. Summer job will last till springtime. Wait till the door to help the other side. Yeah, his mother moves to a darkest cloud. Part I've been looking to fix quite soon before I strip the thing apart is this crack here. Did a rust repair on the loop behind the, the number plate. Also bolted in this piece of the frame which locates the panel catches. Now it's time to strip it all down, ready for some paint. I spent a couple of hours with the wire brush attachment on the grinder and it's come out okay in places but the back is a bit of a mess. I'm not going to spend too much time because I'm just going for a patina finish anyway but I am just going to tidy up some of these back parts. <laughs> the wire brushing done now didn't take too long in the end that's pretty quick that big thick old wire attachment on the angle grinder so it, it blasts it off no problem time to slap some of this brush treatment pleased how that's turned out after rubbing down. Actually very little filler required. That's the paint booth built. off the primer and cleaned it with some sort of degreaser wipes again so it's all ready now to start putting some colour on it. Well I'm really 
really pleased how this brown's turned out and it was a bit of trial and error but I put quite a few layers of different colours on so there is actually a green underneath this yellow and it was all too smooth so basically I got a rag and I used some black and I used the brown and the black and just dabbed it with a cloth and I've tried to sort of get it where I think the rust would form for the next job mix up some clear coat <laughs> The clear coat has gone off now. Well, they came off hassle free, so let's give them a clean up scuff up and another degrease ready for some paint. So I've taken the opportunity while the scooter's apart to clean up the engine. Okay, it's time to get the forks back in the frame. I've cleaned up the bearing races. I've got my special tools for the top nuts. Uh, gonna grease up the bearings first, obviously, and slam it back together. Right, let's do it. So, just managed to put the frame back onto the engine as well. Got the bolt through there just temporarily. Actually ended up pulling the hub right off, so I can have a quick look at the brakes, make sure they're all okay. Next job is to get the suspension unit on. Fits there. Got some new nuts and washers. Okay, it's time to get the wheels back on the scoot. Uh, I've gone for some Scootopia inner tubes, I've used these before, got the correct valve angle, they work well. Got a bit of white wall tire action. So I've gone for these Continentals. And in the end, I went for BGM rims, which I've sprayed red. Looking pretty dapper. Okay, the wheels are done. Dun, dun, dun. I think I'm gonna install the rear brake, pedal and cable, brake switch, etc. So that's the brake pedal assembly all fitted. Let's get that fitted on now. I've been putting this job off a bit because it's a bit of a nightmare, but I'm gonna try and get this exhaust back on without scratching it too much. Really looking forward to this bit. Gonna fit the handlebars, starting with the bracket there, which is gonna go on there. Handlebars, of course, which are gonna bolt there. And the controls from the other set of handlebars that want to go on. I 
cracking on with the build. Let's get these footboards on. I've painted them, so I've got satin black on the underside, patina finish, which I've lacquered on the outside. Gonna go there, held in place with these machine screws, which are flush. So the rubber mats will sit back on top. Time to give her face back. Let's bolt on the headlight and horn. Moving to the rear end, let's get the mudguard on. Again, giving it a coat of black paint. So the mudguard is mounted and also bolted down the fuel tank there. So I think I want to bolt the loop stay in place because that'll just let me know how much room I've got to bolt on the electrics there. So this looks like a good place to attach the electric box, it's out of the way. And there's the rivet nuts fitted. Take this thing apart so we can uh, attack the metal. I think we're going to have to make up a, a concoction and uh, yeah, we'll let it uh, try and age the thing a bit quicker. Start off with some vinegar. Everyone knows salt is no good for metal, right? Soy sauce. Yep. That should just about do it. So I decided to fit the light as it was. And in fact, standing back and having a look, yeah, didn't look too bad in the end. Quite like that finish. A little bit of a fail on the loop itself. When you put the HT lead on, it hits. Basically what I'm gonna have to do, I think, is take a little bit more out of the loop. Which, to be honest, is not a bad thing anyway, because I can put a nice curve on there. And I'm thinking about mounting this speedo up here. Can make quite a simple bracket off of the handlebar. Got my four holes drilled out. Just need to trim the bracket out. Just want to test fit the speedo which fits in there uh, and I'm just going to have to do a little cut around where the cable connects into. There it is, rounded off the edges, Make it look a bit nicer, just going to bolt into there. 
Just need a couple of spaces in there just to clear the bolt heads. Let's give this a coat of paint before screwing it on. Bun, 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 bun. Let's get this thing bolted on. Bear in mind everyone, I have never seen this scooter running. Let's see if we got spark. Yeah, boy. I'm gonna pour this petrol in slowly and watch for leaks. Hopefully there won't be any. Okay, we got our first leak. The electrics connected up to the CDI box here is working the ignition and spark perfectly well. So I'm not too worried about that. Obviously I need to connect a ignition cutout. Some of you might recognize this. It is from a Vespa, normally fits to the top of the headset on a Vespa, but I will be using that obviously in a different position. sure if you can see it easily but I have drilled the hole through there and I've had to chop out a bit of this bracket for the ignition switch to fit. There's the ignition switch and the green wire which runs to the CDI. That will get wrapped as part of the loom. So I've connected up one side of the inline fuse. So cables running up to the rear light are connected. I need to wrap those, but I also need to get some kind of fixings to fix to the inside of the loop. Next, I'd like to connect up the light switch and horn switch. So I've wired the inside of the light and I'm just gonna feed these wires up here, up to the switch. Light switch is fitted, just test that. So that should be normal beam, and that's high beam on the switch. And then if you look in the reflection in the window there, oh, one more thing, horn. Bolt on the rectifier regulator there, and then connect up power there and then tidy everything up.
parts have finally arrived to do the cables. Got the inner cables now. Let's see how we get on with that. Thanks to Kickback Garage for recommending these trunnions. I'm actually having to extend the handlebar slightly. I've cut a little piece of handlebar material from another spare set I had. And I've welded a, a bolt, if you like, to the inside of that. And we'll go in there. Gonna weld that on then I could put a washer and put a nut on and that will stop that sliding off. Hopefully this will be the last time I have to put this blooming gear change on. Greased the handlebars up well. And now I've got this uh, stainless steel dome nut, which I'm gonna put on there. Rubber bits cut out, so so we can stick these on. Yeah, that's pretty good. Rock oil, ST90. I kiss you on the lips. Put my hands on your hips. With that first embrace. That's the engine crankcase full of oil, and I think it's time now start this baby up and see if it will go into gear. I want to have a look at these side panels now. Got the inside of the panels painted up. So I've put some rust treatment on these panels, but I've not covered the whole panel. I've put it along the edges, which are sort of vulnerable to the rot. And also I'll put it on the areas in on the side, which would be like less susceptible to rust. So I've left the top surfaces to look a bit more patinaed. Yeah, 
Not turn around, but man, that's the place to hide. Back on these panels, getting them ready for some sign writing. And yeah, that's where I've got to so far. Use some of that mustard paint, but keep in some of the original patina. So now it's time for this red drop shadow. It doesn't seem to be quite as thick as the black. When we kiss for the first time, I fell right under your spell. When we got together, I fell right under your spell. When I held you close, I fell right under your spell. Cleaned them on both sides there. And these came out lovely. The next job is to put these panel handles on. Looking pretty dapper. One other thing with the side panels, I keep looking at it and I'm not really digging the two hole cutout thing here. One was the existing kickstart hole and I put a new one in. I might just extend that and make that one. One issue I do have is every time I start the engine up, I've been getting some oily petrol coming from around here and where the head meets the barrel, that is definitely oily. I'm gonna pull the head off. Got the shock off, the head is off. You can see actually exactly where the, the problem was coming out. It was shooting out the top. Got this head cleaned up pretty nicely with just some fine wire wool. Got a piece of fine wet and dry paper there taped to my perfectly flat desk here, worktop. And I'm just gonna do this in a figure of eight, which is as Sticky suggests in his uh, Lambretta book. Use a bit of WD-40 again, and just see if we can uh, get that nice and smooth. Well, I've been working on this head for a little while and Hopefully you can pick this up on camera, but it's cleaning up beautifully. And the only slight area now is this top bit, which is exactly where the oily fuel was coming. So that's obviously a low spot there. So I'm just gonna keep going with this. Hopefully we'll get down to that low spot. Now that has come up beautifully.
and it's back together again. I took it for a test drive yesterday, again, just around the block near my house. And yeah, it's in bits again. This clutch is toast. One other issue I noticed as well is that the kickstart arm on the inside there has been rubbing on the outer clutch plate. Apparently a lot of people grind this back a little bit. So I'm gonna give that a go. I think it looks like it has been ground a bit already. So with the original carburetor, I have been told that they just don't work well without a proper air filter on. Obviously the Delortos, you know, everyone runs them without an air filter. So I can do that or put a simple gauze on anyway, which will then allow my flip loop to uh, work correctly. Also should give me some better performance and all the rest of it. New carburetor manifold on. Nuts snugged up. The new carburetor all fitted. It's got this uh, 180 bend. New Delorto carburetor is fitted and it does seem to run kind of okay-ish. I think it needs a bit of setting up. The jets need maybe changing. So excited to be doing this. It feels like the build is complete when this goes on. Today we're going to try and make the scooter much more usable. Got this hole drilled in there. Now I'm going to thread the cable through. I've got my screw. So it's gone in there, all right? I just want to give it a quick test. Yeah. So just going to chuck this little cotter pin back in here, we'll stop that going anywhere. And there we are, the finished thing. Little secret petrol tap on and off. There's the little petrol tap on and off, that's going to work out just great. There's the choke, dead easy. I'm not sure why I'm nervous. <laughs> this is my first time at a dyno. Causing that to be all over the place, then you think? Uh, wrong jet. Ah, oh, okay, good. So the carb's coming off. It feels like the, uh, the main jet definitely wants to be small. Still a touch weak at quarter from him. Okay. Uh, rich at half and uh, still rich at full throttle.
Just want to thank everyone very much for watching you can find us on facebook and instagram give us a follow and a like there and we'll see you on the next one thank you very much